I want to uh, yield five minutes to my good friend, the gentlelady from Wisconsin, Ms. Moore, a uh, distinguished member of the Financial Services Committee. Gentlewoman from Wisconsin is recognized for five minutes. And thank you so much, uh, gentlemen, for yielding, and thank you, Madam Speaker. First of all, uh, I, I must humbly acknowledge what a difficult situation we face in Iraq, and I respect the passionate debate on both sides. And I must concede that I don't really have a cohesive, comprehensive plan for fixing Iraq. And indeed, the Iraq study group uh, has indicated that really no one can guarantee that any course of action in Iraq at this point will stop sectarian warfare, growing violence, or slide toward chaos. Our intelligence community recently found that the violence in Iraq is now a self sustaining sectarian struggle. Our military leaders have indicated that a prolonged occupation cannot prevent what already exists, little political accommodation, hardening sectarian divisions, and a growing civil war. It has been asked what the majority is for. Well, I can tell you that I am for standing down from these policies uh, in Iraq that have been driven primarily and been based primarily on fear and pride. Fear can be false evidence appearing real. And fear is one of the most destructive afflictions that can affect the human mind. And often, as we have seen, has feeds aggression. Pride, of course, is one of the seven deadly sins and it's an excessive belief in one's own abilities. And it's often called the sin from which all others arise. Oh, we're going to be great liberators. Fear can appear and make you see a false reality. As the ancient author Lactantius said, where fear is present, wisdom cannot be. In 2003, America's fear of weapons of mass destruction, Saddam Hussein and Al-Qaeda, bolstered arguments for going to war. Fear outraced the facts. And four years later, our troops find themselves in a civil war. Today, this debate, this call for an escalation, is led by fear. We hear the dire predictions about withdrawing from Iraq. Oh, if we leave, civil war and bloodshed will continue. Sadly, the reality is, if we stay, civil war and bloodshed will continue. Pride blinds our actions just as much as fear. And some have said that ego is the defender of fear. A requirement of pride, indeed a symptom, is that each challenge to our pride drives us harder to improve our illusions and keep up appearances. Oh, we're going to achieve victory. Oh, we've got to maintain the morale and pride of the forces. Oh, if we don't succeed, we don't support our troops. And if we don't send more troops, we're sending the wrong message, a very precarious warning about pride that I think we're all familiar with is that pride cometh before a fall. In order for us to consider what our real interests in Iraq and the Middle East are, we have to get past stoking fear and pride. Fact, the U.S. is not going to impose democracy on Iraq by military force. And no matter how proud we are, no matter how much we may wish, no matter when we leave, the U.S. will leave an Iraq that is in pieces, not at peace. The U.S. alone cannot stabilize the Middle East. Will our pride prevent us from reaching out and be honest brokers and invite others in the region, such as Saudi Arabia and Iran, to help stabilize Iraq? It is said that the punishment for pride is being broken on the wheel, and our budget and military readiness is being broken on the wheel. Currently, there are no active or reserve All contact time is expired. Can I just close briefly? Does the gentleman will yield? I gladly yield 30 seconds to the gentleman. The gentleman yields. Thank you. There are a lot of things I'd like to see in Iraq, Madam the Speaker. 
uh, more political and economic opportunities for women, respect for law, the emerging of democratic institutions. But as the Iraq study group noted, achieving the goal of having an Iraq that can govern itself, sustain itself, and defend itself will require much time and depend primarily on the actions of the Iraqi people, not American troops. Thank you, Madam uh, Speaker.